today, today, you are going to succeed in your kitchen better than you ever have in a really long time. Today, you're going to learn some things that are going to help you walk into your kitchen, think about what it is you're going to eat or not eat or how, and have the confidence that you have set up this kitchen to help you succeed in a way that requires less grit and self-discipline, in a way that doesn't rely on you eating things that taste like bark, dust, and sadness. (laughs) I know, my couchy friends, you know that bark, dust, and sadness, man. I'll tell you, we don't like that. We don't like that. In a way that also requires less grit and self-discipline. And you know, Grit and self-discipline, yes, we need it in life, but it is fundamentally flawed when we're expecting to rely on an entire life of grit and self-discipline. And so that's why a lot of what we do here is we try to help you set yourself up so you don't need constant grit and self-discipline because that is a recipe for walking on that cliff edge and you just, you know, trip on one little rock and you're falling down the ravine. And we don't, we don't want that. We don't want that. We want it to make a life more so you can just kind of just live your life and have it be no big deal. So before we dive into that, um, I also want to reach out. If you are brand new to Couch to Active and new to the podcast, welcome. If you're new to Couch to Active, head on over to couchtoactive.com right now. That's couch to active com. You'll be able to see what we're all about and, and surf through the website. Look at the different pages because we've got uh, a lot going on there. We've got some freebies that you'll be able to find and they're not all right on that homepage. So really take some time to look around into the different pages, see what we got going on, see if you can find those freebies. Um, and one brand new one we've got is a Roadmap 101. This is a brand new thing that we have that is your roadmap for all of this Couch to Active stuff, health and food, fitness and food, exercise and food help you get going. So head on over, multitask that. The link is in the show notes here to Couch to Active, so you can uh, click on that and get going. All right, let's dive in on how to help you eat the way you want to and succeed in the kitchen. We're going to talk about the concept of having a food safe kitchen and your ceiling of your kitchen and the floor of your kitchen. Now, before we get into all those pieces, food safe, ceiling, floor, what all that is tactically, all of this, you will succeed with it so much more if you do what I did first. And that is pause, take a deep breath, and realize that this whole kitchen thing and what you eat is going to get a whole lot easier when you accept the fact that you're a human being and not a robot. Now, this is so much harder to do than we think because we want to say, no, I can, you know, be a robot. I can have grit. I can have self-discipline. I can have whatever I want in my kitchen. I cannot worry about what other people put in the kitchen too, food-wise. You know, I'm going to make those good, healthy choices. Like, no, you are not a robot. I am not a robot. I cannot just go into a kitchen, especially if I'm hungry, open the fridge, check out what's in my fridge and find out that the healthiest option is the hardest thing to cook and the unhealthy option is right there to grab. The healthy option doesn't taste as good to me and the unhealthy option is like right there and it's salt, fat, and sugar. The trifecta of, yes, cave woman wants. (laughs) I can't, we can't do that. Now, here's the thing recognizing and realizing you are a human being is not a failure. It is a step back slowly away from magical thinking. 
That's right. We tend to have this like, I am, I'm awesome. I can have the, you know, the chips there. I can have the junk there. I can have the case of beer there. And it, like, what could possibly go wrong, right? So we've got to accept we are human beings. And it's, it's way more than just grit and self-discipline. Now, this isn't the tactic. This isn't the tactic to help you success, be successful in the kitchen, but this is a mindset piece we need to bring to it. When you're able to recognize, oh, oh yeah, oh yeah, I am a human being. I have a whole body of all these biological chemical reactions going on in my body, connected to my gut, connected to my brain. And if I get hungry or hangry, <laughs> if I get too hungry, or if I get stressed, or if I have something terrible going on in my life, or if that so-and-so who lives with me is driving me crazy for the five billionth time, it's a, it's a thing of self-compassion and it's a thing of humanity of realizing this is not a morality character flaw to go to food. This is actually your body's biology driving you to cope with the food. It's way more than that. But what we've got to do is just accept you are a human being. And when I did that, when I re started really accepting like, okay, this high performing Lynn here who always likes to try to do her best, always wants to be above the curve on the far end of the bell curve. I like, no, I, I, I'm a human just like everybody else. Well, then, then that helped me actually get out of denial and actually make real progress. So that's one thing you got to do. Now, before we dive into this whole concept of the ceiling, the floor, the food safe kitchen, that's that's what this whole tip is all about. But before we get there, I, I, there's also a thing where if you're like me, you also kind of want the whole topic of food and what you eat in the kitchen to be no big deal. Like I, I, I want, I just want to live my life. <laughs> I just want to do things. I mean, here I am. I've got this whole couch to active, and really, it's just to support the life I want to live. And I get in front of the microphone and I talk health, food, fitness, all that exercise. The word fitness. The word fitness is a bit of a twitchy word for me because I think the brainwashing we have around the word fitness leaves us feeling lacking, leaves us feeling like we're never good enough and we'll never be good enough. Um, that's a whole nother podcast, probably a whole nother book. Back to the food, back to the kitchen. Here we go. Back on task, folks. <laughs> I... I don't want my life to be ruled by food. And you all know, I finally got my health back. I had a lot of health issues that happened over a few years. Finally got my life in a place where I could focus on my health more. Finally got my health. It took me years to get my health into a place where I wasn't sleeping 15 hours a day. I wasn't groggy all the time. I wasn't feeling like I needed to sleep 24 seven. I, finally got it, all that back, started gaining strength, was able to exercise again, did all that. And then this last year was able to lose the weight that I gained when my health had fallen apart. Yeah. And so with that whole process of weight loss, I wanted to also gain strength and I wanted it to be no big deal which is like, I, I'm like, I want the whole kahuna. I want this to be no big deal. I want to keep living my life. I don't want to feel like I'm trapped in a cage. I want it all to be a non-issue. And so I had to build this in a way that would work for you. And I know that's for a lot of you too. Like we just, we don't want to be slaves to having to, you know, feel like we're trapped in what we can and can't eat. And so if that's you, if you're like that too, you're like, I just want to live my life. <laughs> this, is, 
this whole topic of what to eat, when to eat, how to eat, all those things, it can, it can be really kind of an annoying topic because it's like, just let me live. Just let me live. Okay. So here, here is, here's the thing. This is my, one of my biggest things, mindset things that I did in the kitchen that really, really helps me succeed. So once I realize, gosh, darn it, I'm a human being. <laughs> We're all human beings. The folks who say they're not human beings, the folks who say like, oh, I can, like, this is no problem. Uh, they're lying to themselves. Okay. So I'm a human being. I got to make this kitchen food safe. And I am not talking about foodborne illnesses or salmonella or like, don't leave your meat on the kitchen cupboard for more than two hours. You'll get sick. Like, this is not what we're talking about. What I'm talking about is setting up our kitchens to have an environment where when you go in there, you are going to be much more likely to succeed with the food you choose to eat in that moment, especially when you're stressed out, especially when you're too busy, especially when you're tired, especially when you just got bad news, and especially when you just got bad news, you're tired, you're stressed out, and uh, you just got even more bad news, and you're sick. Yeah, yeah, this is what we're talking about. This is the life piece that's so important. So the concept when we think about the kitchen is think about a ceiling of your kitchen, and this is a metaphorical ceiling, and the floor of your kitchen. The ceiling of your kitchen represents the pinnacle of health and wellness you can attain because of how healthy the food is in your kitchen and the food options are in your kitchen and how easy it is to access those food options in my kitchen. So for example, I walk into my kitchen, do, 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 open the refrigerator. And if I look in that refrigerator and there is apples, assuming I like apples, there is vegetables, assuming I like those vegetables, there is meals I have prepped that are easy to grab. Grab that meal, microwave it, boop, 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 90 seconds later, ding, I've got a healthy meal. There are pre-prepped salads or soups or anything that is easy to grab, as easy as it is to grab fast food or as easy it is to go to, you know, a McDonald's or a drive-thru or it's like easier than that, something to grab that's easy and healthy. My health can only get as good as how amazing those healthy options are. If those healthy options are not in the fridge, I'm not going to be able to have the benefit of the health from those healthy options because they're not there. <laughs> now, we're going to talk about the ceiling a little bit more, but now let's talk about the floor. This one, this one is really important because we're we're good, we're good at sometimes getting healthy options into our fridge even if we let them rot and then we never eat them, but we're going to talk about that more in a minute. The, let's talk about the floor. If I walk into my fridge, my <laughs> Okay, I'm walking into my fridge. I got a big old fridge. I just walked into into my fridge. We're going with it. We're going with it. <laughs> if I walk into my fridge, maybe I wish I had a big old fridge. The floor of my kitchen is if I walk into my fridge and I am stressed out because I just got bad news and I already don't feel good and I'm sleep deprived, and I'm annoyed at so-and-so, and I don't like my job, and I just got um, somebody else, you know, as a friend isn't calling me back, and, and, and I stubbed my toe that morning, and I meant to take a shower, and now I feel gross because I never took a shower all day, or I haven't taken a shower for three days. I really should have brushed my teeth that morning, but I didn't brush my teeth that morning, and I know all these things, and now I've got my negative self-talk around all of that, and I'm, I'm just like, bleh, and I walk into my fridge like that. <laughs> I said it again. The floor is how far down I can fall. What kind of, I'm going to say it, 
bad food choices are in my kitchen. Now you guys know when I say good and bad, I am not moralizing this. I am not saying you're good and you're bad. We know this, but clarity is kind. And so, <laughs> yeah, that's the Brene Brown term. Clarity is kind. So I'm going to say bad food choices, which are mean things we eat that aren't healthy for us. Good food choices, things we eat that are healthy for us. Okay. If my kitchen is full of high fat, salty, sugar, something I can grab. And the easiest thing for me to grab is a bad food choice. I am going to grab that. This is where I have to realize I am a human. We have to accept we are human beings. This isn't a good or a bad thing. This is a, this is what it is thing. I am going to grab those chips. I am going to grab that ice cream. I am, or whatever whatever the thing is for you. We all have things. Uh, like for example, I I can have cereal in my house and I don't go for that. I don't usually go for that and grab that. So like, that's okay for me. But maybe for you, that's not okay for you. Um, I, oh shoot, I've been working on this whole kitchen thing. Now my, my, my dad is rusty. <laughs> like, what are the bad things? I have to be careful about pastries in my house. Like if I go in and there's a beautiful croissant right there, I will grab that. I will grab two of them, maybe even three. Maybe even three of them plus something else. Yeah. So the floor is when you have that stressful time, when you have that hangry time, how far can you fall? Now, some of us, some of us, we have kitchens that are not ceilings and floors. Some of us, we have really, really low ceilings that we're going to bonk our heads on. <laughs> and our floor is like under the earth like way down there. So if we look at our kitchen and really assess what food do we have in there to support our health, it really isn't. Now, that's that concept of the ceiling and the floor. There's two things that have to happen here. First is, do I have healthy options in my kitchen? Do, 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 ding. Okay, good. Do you have healthy options in your kitchen? Here's the second piece of that that's so important. Are you ready? Here's the question for you. Do you have healthy options in your kitchen? Or when you do have healthy options in your kitchen, or when you do go and get those healthy options for your kitchen, here's the second question. How grab and go are those options. That's right. That's right. Because we all know we've all bought the pre-made salad and it sits in the bottom drawer of the fridge. And three weeks later, we got to carefully throw that thing away because the bag is going to explode, right? <laughs> we all know we like grab the, the chicken, we grab the healthy meats, we grab the other, you know, asparagus that we say we're going to cook and we never do because it's just not grab and go ready. So this is where the work comes in is thinking about is that if I have a kitchen full of healthy options, but none of them are grab and go. None of them are something I can actually use. Do I really have a kitchen full of healthy options? Or do I actually have a kitchen that's full of aspirations of eating healthy, but we never actually get there because it's just too much work in the moment when we're hungry? Yeah, let me say that again. <laughs> Some of us do a really good job of filling our fridge with all the healthy food, all the healthy things, but they're all things that have to be chopped and cooked and washed and prepped and roasted and baked and sauteed. And, and so when we go into that, that kitchen and we're hitting the floor and we're stressed out because we just got an email from work that's making us angry, when you're angry about that email at work, it is not a time that you're going to be like, oh yeah, let's pull out this asparagus and season it and saute it. That sounds like a great idea. <laughs> so when you go in there, if that's all you have are things you have to cook, 
then you have aspirations of eating healthy. You aren't actually getting to where you can do it consistently. So here's what you do. You start the slow step at a time work of figuring out how do I get these super easy options? So here's the pitfall you got to avoid. This does not mean that we go to pre-packaged, healthy, green-washed crap food that's made to look healthy for you, but it's really just another way of having processed foods. What this means is we look at how do we get these healthy foods in a way that we actually enjoy them and eat them. And that's where you see so many people talk and preach about meal prepping and batch cooking and doing things where you prep a whole bunch of stuff on one day and have it for multiple days. So that's where the work comes in of setting yourself up for success that way. So then your floor then becomes those pre-packaged healthy options, healthier options. That's right. So your ceiling is not the protein bar that's wrapped in cellophane that's been on the you know, counter for months because it's got a forever shelf life because it's really not that great of an option. That actually then becomes your floor. So if you hit the floor, you're eating the healthier prepackaged options, not the junk candy bar, not the full sugar soda, not the chips out of the bag. When you hit the floor, you're, you have something else. Or when you hit the floor, maybe you do have these meals prepped and they're ready to go and you actually like them. So when you have a moment when you realize you just accidentally binged way too much news network and you're totally stressed out, (laughs) you go into that kitchen and you've got things you actually like to eat that are easy to grab and that is your ceiling. Now, here's one more trick on the ceiling. Don't underestimate how creative you can get with pushing your ceiling of healthy food options up. Some of us need to do some work. Maybe this is you. You need to do some work on realizing you are worthy of this. Maybe you're somebody who also provides food for other people in your house. And those other people in your house are not on board with your wellness journey. And that's okay. They don't have to be on board for you to be on board with yourself. But maybe you acquiesce too much and you know you're making their unhealthy options, their needs, their whims around food. The you're making you not wanting to hear them complain about the healthy things you're making. You're making it so that you're actually hurting your own health and you're making not as healthy options because of the person in your house. So, you know, yeah, that's a whole nother can of worms. Um, one of the things for me I realized is my son went to college. I'm an empty nester. And when he went to college, his whole life, I'll preach at him about healthy eating and food and protein and how many grams of protein he needs and all this in a healthy way. And when he went off to college, I'm like, all right, I'm preaching at him, go to the grocery store and buy the healthy things, you know, if at all possible, buy the organic, you know, and if you can afford it and it looks good, because sometimes you can afford it and it looks terrible or something, you know, that's a whole nother thing. And then I go to the grocery store myself and I look at some options and I think, oh, well, those raspberries are kind of expensive. (laughs) But I would have bought them for my son in a heartbeat. Yeah. So we got to make sure we give ourselves the same love and attention and worthiness that we give the other people in our household. We do this all the time. We do things for other people that we think are good for them, that are amazing for them. They are worth it. We got to give that back to ourselves too and push that ceiling up even higher. I was just talking to some clients last week. Oh, great, great, great people. 
And one of the things that we brainstormed about the ceiling is maybe the ceiling for your food can also be if you have groceries delivered, maybe you say, okay, I'm going to bump my ceiling up a little higher. I'm going to make getting access to healthy meals even easier by having grocery delivery more often. And maybe I just need a few things and I think, oh, it's not worth it. I've got this other not as healthy option at home. I'll just eat that other healthy thing and I'll do another grocery delivery later because it's just not practical to do such a small grocery delivery. And one of the discussions we had is, well, maybe part of your ceiling, a part of having more healthy options in your house is budgeting for more grocery deliveries and just saying, you know what? I'm going to give myself the option of doing this. I'm going to give myself the option of having fresh produce delivered more often. I'm going to give myself the option of if I'm out of, uh, you know, eggs for breakfast, that I'm going to order those, have them delivered. If you live in a city that can, you know, deliver on the same day, lucky you, uh, order those, have them delivered so that I don't turn to a, you know, highly refined carb breakfast. So lots of things. So there we have it, friends. It's the, it's the ceiling and the floor. How high can your health get based on how amazingly healthy your food is? How poor can your health get by how much crap you have in your house and balancing that all out? Now, it's not perfect. We do this ceiling and the floor thing. And then the kitchen is a much more what I call food safe place to be. And that is is important because it's the consistency. It's what we do every single day, day in, day out, day over, day over, day that has the biggest impact for us. That consistency is so important. And when you have that food safe kitchen, then not if, but when you really hit the floor in other areas, somebody's birthday party, dining out, and you're like, I just had to order the thing. I just, I couldn't order the healthy thing. Then then fine. It only happens every now and then. I mean, I hit the floor. Oh, you guys, you guys, you guys, I hit the floor bad the other day. And you know what? It was no big deal. Here's what happened. I had some medical tests recently that I had to fast for. When I fasted for these medical tests, they were like 24 hour, to, I had two of them, 24 hour fast medical tests. When I fasted, I hydrated and made sure my electrolytes were good like crazy. And I found that I felt like a rock star. I had so much energy. I was like, oh, this is awesome. So within about 10 days, I did a third fast simply because I loved the energy of it, but I made the mistake of not eating enough on the next day. And I ended up really ravenous and hungry. It's the yo-yo thing. It's a quint- That's a quintessential example of yo-yoing. I got stressed out, you know, and uh, had a few things happen where I was kind of stressed and I hadn't eaten enough because I had fasted the day before. I went to the grocery store with my healthy grocery list, my items, and I went to the grocery store hungry, mistake. I went to the grocery store stressed, mistake, but it's just how it worked out because life just goes that way sometime. Not beat myself up, but I went to the grocery store grabbed some things I wouldn't have normally grabbed. I get into the car. Before I even leave the parking lot, I ate the whole bagel that I bought. Mm -hmm. Yeah, ate the whole bagel. Now you might think, okay, Lynn, that's really cute. You ate the bagel. (laughs) Yeah, but wait, there's more. Before I got from the grocery store, to my home, which was a five minute drive. I ate both the donuts I bought. Yep, bagel, two donuts, ding, done. As I was unpacking my groceries, I ate 
the entire hoagie roll that I bought. So in a matter of about 15 minutes, I ate a thousand calories of highly refined carbs. And if I had bought more, I probably could have eaten more. I didn't feel overly stuffed. I didn't feel horrible. I felt like I could still eat dinner because those high refined carbs, they don't make you feel satiated. They just fill a hole in your stomach. Did they help my stress? Yeah, it actually did. Was it emotional eating? Absolutely, yes. But because my kitchen is fairly food safe, actually because my kitchen really is food safe, that was the end of it. That was the end of the floor. And that was, I look back and I could say, oh, that was so stupid, Len. Why do you do that? You know better. You know better. You preach this. But I'm a human too. So when that happened, no big deal. What happened to the number on the scale? Nothing. That's right. Nothing. Because I don't do that every day. I don't even do that every week. But, um, but those things still happen. So there is no perfection, you guys. There is no perfection. There's no perfection. There's no perfection. It's always just making the life the best you could make. And if you think you're going to be perfect, you're, you're just telling yourself, uh, telling yourself a story and beating yourself up. And if you see people on the internet telling you how amazing and perfect they are, they're liars. <laughs> because we're humans. It goes back to the beginning, back to the beginning. We are humans. So there you go, friends. That, that has been, that concept has been the number one thing to help me with being successful in the kitchen consistently, thinking about getting the ceiling, my healthy options, as easy and accessible and available as possible cleaning the junk out of my kitchen, making it so I don't have the junk in the kitchen. So when I hit the floor, gosh darn it, there's only stupid healthy stuff. (laughs) And then you grab it and the second you take a bite of the healthy thing, you forget that it's a stupid healthy thing and your body reminds you, oh, actually, I really like this. Mm -hmm. So then when other things do come up and you really hit the floor or you hit the pothole, it's not a big deal because there's only a pothole here and there and you're not going to blow out the tires on your car uh, because overall the road is pretty smooth sailing. And that, my friends, is a beautiful thing. So there you go. If you got any questions about this, uh, any more detail you want me to go into, head on over to Couch to Active, send me an email, tell me what you thought about it. Um, what questions you have, or tell me your story of this. And uh, I'd love to share these on the uh, on the podcast. Also, um, if you haven't yet, head on over to couchactive.com. I would love to help you with this stuff. This is what we do. We're really good at it. And the biggest thing we're really good at is making sure you do this in a way that you actually like your life better. Um, that's really how we're different. We're, we're all about helping you love your life in the process, not just follow some rule book for the sake of making yourself miserable and skinny. There we go. All right, you guys head on over to couch2active.com. We'll see you there. Bye-bye now.